Hey, I'm Cecily Korst. Welcome to the trailer. The Trailer Talks is sponsored by Imaging DNA, Ideas, Images, Insight. The core of the conversation is the image at imagingdna.com. I'm Jay Forty. I am a uh, certified life coach, a motivational speaker, and an author. Awesome. That was nice and short because I was drinking coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, we're ultra casual here, so no big deal. But I'm going to ask you some hard questions like, tell me about your journey thus far. So where I am now has nothing to do with where I've been, um, and which is why I think this is a really great conversation. So um, very quickly, my background was um, I was a CPA. I was a uh, CFO. I was a a guy that was focused mostly about business. And um, so I had a lot of things in life that I was busy doing because everybody else said I should do them. So my journey took me to places that were really not about who I was. And I didn't learn until I was in my 30s that I should step up and own myself. And if I did, the person that I would find out who I was would be far bigger than the person I've always pretended to be. So, um, you know, I know in our earlier conversation, I had told you that I was also the, uh, the gay kid in a big Italian family. And part of my journey happened when I finally was honest about that part of me. And I spent most of my life hiding from it because it wasn't any part of what I thought I should be or who I wanted to be or who everybody around me thought I should be. So my journey, I really am living my second life at the moment here because the first one wasn't mine. You know, this one is now mine. And the first one was all about what everybody thought I should do and who I should be and what I should, you know, where I should work and how I should live and all that stuff. And finally, I am in a space now that is really all about what's right for me. And that's opened up this world that I never knew could have existed before. So looking from the outside, describe yourself as you were before. I was the world's most compliant kid. Um, I had an older brother and older sister, younger sister, younger two brothers. And my older brother and my dad were kind of in conflict with each other. So it was always my self-perceived. I owned this. I didn't, nobody gave me this title, but I was the kid that just didn't want to disappoint his parents. So when my older brother was trying to figure himself out um, and was at frequently at odds with the way that the family kind of wanted the six of us to grow up, um, that was me. So anything my parents said, that's what you should do. That's what I was like. So I followed the rules. I did everything that they said, which was, you know, to be great in life, you uh, study hard, you go to school, you get married, you have kids, get a good job. Okay, next kid. Ba-boom. Okay, next kid. Okay, next kid. And so not to to challenge anybody because I have a personality that's not very confrontational. Um, I went and did all that stuff. And then I found myself in my 30s looking at life as the most um, unfortunate event ever. I hated every part of it. I had this lovely wife and wonderful kids and a great job, and it wasn't for me. I was, I was pretending to be something that, that wasn't me. And everything that everybody said you should have, I had, and I couldn't stand it. I just couldn't stand it. And there was one point in there where I was really very close to ending it because I didn't think. I thought life was supposed to be great, and nothing about mine was. So contrast that with looking at yourself now. Oh my God. So, so the thing that, that, that the biggest lesson I learned in this short of that you should always be who you truly are because the biggest, most creative and most amazing self is the one that you really are, not the one that everybody tells you you should be. And the life that I have now is so, it's exponentially larger than I ever imagined possible because the things that kept me small were the things that everybody said you should do so it fit their definition of you and not my definition of me. And in that moment, everything about what I would consider that I had always thought about and then said no, because it didn't fit or somebody would say no, or I would get some flack about it. For some reason, I started to see that if I said yes to it, the world that it would bring me to was so much larger than the one that I had. And instantly, though it was a real strife to to lose and change that whole life from where I was, just because it was safe and known doesn't mean it was the right one. It was just known. And the ability to move away from that into the unknown opened up possibilities that I just never imagined anybody could have. So, so I have this big, exciting life now that, is, that suits me. That, that Every day is an opportunity to see something I didn't see yesterday because the blinders that I moved through life, I took off 
And the moment I did that, everything started to show up. Wow. So tell us about your book. So I started as a um, CPA and a CFO in the, in the business world. And then, as luck would have it, a, a company that wanted to buy the company I was a CFO for um, needed a director of education. And that was my moment to, to realize that the job that I had always chosen was one that didn't really fit me. So I took over as a director of education there and stumbled around this concept of uh, human capital or talent management. So I was working with companies to help th- the company I was working for to help them put attract, hire, and retain the right people. When I did that, I stumbled on the most amazing thing, that the reason why somebody works well in the workplace is because they figured themselves out, they know what they're good at, and they chose a job that lets them be what they're great at. And so the book that we're talking about today, The Greatness Zone, was a book, the second book that I wrote, because the first one was to help managers in the workplace put the right people in the right jobs. This one said, look, if I could tell the world what I need, when I asked the world, is this you? They shrugged their shoulders and said, I have no idea. I don't know me. I don't know what I'm good at. I don't know what I'm passionate about. I don't know what matters to me because you know what? Nobody ever asked me. So the greatness zone is a process done in story form to help people discover what is it they're good at? What are they passionate about and what matters to them? And if they knew that, they could then look at their world and find out where in today's world are the places that let me show up big, let me show up my most creative, most dynamic, most exceptional self. And if I could do that, then how I show up would be so much better than bluffing my way through this big thing called life. People love stories, which is awesome. Where did the characters come from in the book? <laughs> you know, I, I will be honest with you. I will, I will tell this to you and to anybody anytime. There is wisdom in that book that is way bigger than the accountant in me. So... You know, somebody had asked Mozart once, you know, where do you get the inspiration for the stuff that you write? And he has this wonderful line, and I use it now too. He said, it's not mine. I just took dictation. That something bigger was trying to work through that. So for some reason, those characters kind of came out in this big space that I can sometimes get to. And in that place is, I just call it the place where all the answers are. You know, it's out of my brain and a little bit bigger. And in it, the characters are a little bit of me, a little bit of my family, a little bit of friends I knew when I was growing up. They have all kind of worked in. They came out out of all the experiences of growing up in a big Italian family that did in fact have rules to show up big to life, but each of us still had to pick of the rules which ones mattered. And it was me that kept taking all the rules exactly as they were said instead of understanding they were guideposts for me to then navigate how I should show up everywhere. So what was it like flipping that switch on your life, going from the accountant, the expectations to Mm. being who you are today? It was the scariest thing I ever did. Um, Even when you're in a place where you're not that happy, just because you know what it feels like, you kind of hold on to it. The moment, it was like jumping off the bridge or jumping out of a plane, wondering if your chute was going to open. And the excitement about doing it is, is matched with the amount of fear that says, what were you possibly thinking that you could do this? I had an uncle who had said to me when I did that, you know, you're not fit to be around your family. For you to choose to get out of being married, to choose this other life, you don't belong in our family anymore. So in that one moment where you want the support of having the, co- or the courage or the, the acknowledgement, the validation that said, you know, I've got to live what's right for me. How can I do that when everybody around me says, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you can't. The church says no, the family says no, everything says no. So the switch was when I finally developed a little bit of courage that said, it's not about what they want, it's about what you want. Because the only way you show up big to your own life is if you live the life you were given, not the one everybody says you should have. And that was the switch. I think the big motivation for the book was how would I tell other people in that moment when I saw that life could be big, though it was scary, that there's a process to gradually move there so you don't get all freaked out, but at the same time, don't give up. So what was last year's pinch me moment for you? The way that the rest of the world does things for some reason just doesn't appeal to me or doesn't cross my road. I'm always thinking about what the next two or three things should be. I I don't know. That's where my head goes. So we were taking the message of the greatness zone and finding out who else could use this And I introduced it to a business dean of a college down here in South Florida. And he, um, so I introduced the whole workplace book that I have, thinking that's what he wanted. 
And then he read The Greatness Zone. He said, no, it's The Greatness Zone book that I want. I want to see if you'll write a course for our entrepreneurship and innovation introduction to business, but use the thinking that says you have to know yourself and know your world to show up big. I want everybody who's a freshman in my college in the College of Business to go through that thinking. That was amazing that, that someone saw it and said, wait a minute, here's my idea about what is, wait, your idea, I hadn't thought about idea. So, so instantly we are now trying to do, or we are now on the school scene helping schools invent a course on entrepreneurship that's based on helping people discover what they're great at. Do you have a podcast? We are just starting. So I've been battling for a while about the, should my podcast be about the fire up your employees, the first book, because there's so much awful stuff going on in the workplace that people just put the right people in the right job. When you and I are customers, the whole thing would be different if the people we worked with, I mean, the people that we went and had service from actually liked what they did and knew what it was. So in one minute, I'm leaning that way. In the next minute, man, the message of the greatness zone is the biggest thing I've ever been involved in. And and I so want people to realize that they have to choose to show up big to the things that they have. And, and if they could look deep, they would see that what they came packaged with is this amazing, amazing stuff. And the world is just tapping its foot, waiting for us to figure out where we should show up. And if we could show up that way, we would change everything. It would be so easy to, to make a difference. So so one of those two is, is working its way through. I think the greatness zone is going to win. What is success for you in the future? I think that's around the word purpose. And um, for someone who spent most of their life truly way, wayward, wayless, not, not, not knowing where that road was, and then instantly knowing where the road was but rejecting it because it was going to require me to be honest about something about myself that I told myself I would never tell the world. Um, I think purpose for me, which is my definition of success, is that that we get this step-by-step process out to anybody who wants to choose to, to want to know how to show up to life in a big way. So success for me is how do I work with students so that they learn in their junior and senior years how to show up to college if that's what they want, but one that matches what their major, that matches their love for something, so it uses their abilities so at the end of school they show up big to their life. Anybody who's lost a job or has a big life change. We, so I think success for me is more and more of get, uh, to get that message out to more and more people so they could see that they are all that they should be. And if they just trusted that, they would then be able to show up to life in a really epic way. Um, where can people find you? Uh, we have a pretty robust little website called uh, thegreatnesszone.com. Um, uh, we also have a really robust Facebook page. And the reason why this is so important is my partner, Jeff, is the, the one who does that. And he is this great, spiritual, fun, dynamic guy who makes that Facebook page totally amazing. So um, follow that, if for no other reason, just to see the clever and inspirational things that show up every day. On thegreatnesszone.com, we have some a lot of free things that we do. We have um, the Life's Too Big to Play Small newsletter that comes out each week. We have Daily Greatness Inspiration because we know sometimes it just takes a shot, you know, Somebody needs to poke us to make sure we stay on the greatness side. And we even have something unusual. We have twice a week we send out a journal inspiration because for you to get in your greatness zone, sometimes journaling is a way to discover what your great abilities are. And the one thing people say to us when we teach the Life Possibilities course is that we just don't know what to journal about. So we give you topics every week. And in that, we start to find that people who didn't journal are starting to write all the time, which we love. Wow. Maybe you guys should put out a little journal book. Oh, we have things coming. We have uh, so Yay. so the, so the next couple of books. We have the next couple of books, and and I, and I will tell you that the title of the next book is called "The Greatness Habit." That's the problem that we can talk about being in the greatness zone, but then we zone in and we zone out. Wait, what if you were in it all the time? Wouldn't that be great? So it's what would it take to make greatness your habit? That's coming. So what are you looking forward to in the future? I w- I would like to get as many people as excited about life as I am, knowing how I wasn't. So if I could go from really close to saying it's time for this to go, I don't want this anymore, to wait, 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 I need another 100 years for all the things I got planned. So how do I help people get there? And that to me is sharing this message that the greatness zone happened to be given to me. And, and I quite honestly, that, that's the way that I feel it. So, so my gifts are in writing and speaking. So then I get this message and I'm charged with sharing a process to help people show up big to what it is that they want to be so that they have the same 
the same feeling that when they wake up each morning, they say, yes, rather than, oh, shoot me. And, um, and there are a lot of people, you know, who are in horrible jobs because they didn't think about it. But we're trying to give them a process where if they thought about it, they would choose wisely, which makes them courageous, makes them creative. And that's where life is. Life is in the creativity. It's so much here for you to pick from. Stop putting on these little blinders that say it's only this. Take the blinders off and look right and look left and everything that's out there say, yep, it's possible. Is it possible for me? Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is yes, but you got to ask the question, could it be for me? Cool. So what's the one thing that you think everyone should know about living life creatively? You already are. You already are. And the reason why you don't is that someone someplace sometimes said don't. And if instead you heard do instead of don't, you would realize that everything around you was way more possible than you think it was. And the creative side of you would show up to everything. Um, we, so I was telling you about, we, we teach this course for that college. So this fits in beautifully. Though we are trying to get them to be entrepreneurs, one of the things we ask them to do is to become opportunity hunters. I want you to look at everything in today's world and ask this question, what else? What could happen here? Where's the opportunity? Where's the possibility? And if we could go through life with that question or those questions, I think we would access our creativity every moment of every day. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for being on the podcast. I really appreciate it. No, my pleasure, Cecily. It was great being here. I love chatting about this stuff. You can tell it's, it's talking is my thing. So thank you for letting me talk so much. Oh, okay. I, I, I'll do that and raise you one. Russian dolls. Um, wow. Okay, go for it. Um, um, uh, <laughs> I thought nothing beat the dog. <laughs> oh, come, come on, come on, come on. I even got, wait a minute. I got a Buddha. How about that? Wait a minute. I got a Buddha. Oh, dang it. No. The, I've got, oh, oh. I've got, <laughs> I have, I have truffle salt. Oh, all right. Wait, wait, wait. Um, I think you won on that one. All right. Okay, you win. <laughs> <laughs>